The story begins with a woman named Vanessa gazing out into the forest when she is suddenly startled by a bird crashing into the window. Going outside, she discovers the bird's lifeless body. Her husband, Alex, joins her, offering comfort by suggesting that his mother used to say that dead birds symbolize new beginnings. However, when he reaches for her hand, she withdraws and returns inside. The following day, Vanessa looks out the window again and questions Alex and his brother Martel about a potential explosion they might have heard the previous night. Both deny hearing anything, and Martel reveals that the forest activity center was shut down due to suspicious occurrences, leading to people disappearing when associated with the facility, suggesting it might have something to do with the explosions. Alex dismisses this as a tale fabricated by their absent father, but Martel explains that their father left in search of something, as hinted at in his journal. Feeling the need for solitude, Vanessa decides to hike alone. Martel equips her with a gun for protection against wildlife and a walkie-talkie due to the lack of reception in the woods. Inquiring about the potential sale of their house, Martel receives a firm rejection from Vanessa, though Alex hints at considering it, leading Vanessa to storm out in frustration. Alex follows, and Vanessa confronts him about whether he wishes she had died instead of their son in the accident that day. Alex reassures her of his forgiveness and expresses his desire not to lose her, but Vanessa remains angry and walks away. She crosses the river and continues walking until she hears a sound. As she moves to investigate when someone shoots at her, and she retaliates by shooting the person in the leg. However, to her shock, she realizes that the mysterious shooter is herself, who quickly runs away. Back at home, it's been two hours since Vanessa left for the walk, and Alex and Martel are worried when a baffled Vanessa walks in. When they ask her why she looks so stressed, she tells them she saw a bear and rushes inside her room. Alex follows her and reassures her that he loves her and that she should tell him why she looks so terrified. Initially hesitant, Vanessa eventually breaks down, admitting they can't continue pretending their son's death was an accident and that they need to confront it. She urges Alex to leave so she can be alone and cope with these feelings. Alex confides in Martel about losing their son a year ago and now potentially losing Vanessa and Martel comforts him. Later, Alex invites Vanessa to dinner and she hesitantly follows him. Over dinner, Martel tells them the story of how he almost drowned when he was nine. He tells them that it changed his perception of life as initially he became an alcoholic, but eventually realized that everything is in the hands of fate and has been sober for a long time now. Vanessa thinks that Martel is trying to lecture her and decides to grab her things and leave. When Martel steps in to help her, he accidentally burns himself on the grill and quickly rushes inside. Vanessa follows him to find him pouring himself a glass of alcohol and confronts him if he lied about being clean. But before he can say anything, she notices the healed burn mark on his hand to which Martel responds with, it's not as bad as we thought. He walks out the front door and at the same time, another Martel walks in from the back door with his hand bandaged. This shocks Vanessa to the point that she rushes into her room. The following day, she ventures into the woods again in search of answers. She ultimately comes across a fence that has been locked. Disobeying the warning sign, she enters. After some time of trekking, she finds a massive hollow tree stem. She crosses it, and weird things start to happen. After a few more hours of walking and noticing a fallen tree on the ground, she eventually finds the same tree arch and discovers the exact identical scene on both sides of the arch. She freaks out, ties her scarf on one end, and begins to walk, marking her trail with markers on the trees. She runs into the arch again a short while later, but her scarf is missing this time. She looks for the marks she made on the trees, but never finds them. She goes back to the fence, crosses it, now terrified heads back home to tell Alex what's happened. He listens to her and depressively remarks that she sounds just like his father after she tells him she felt as though she was in a loop. She informs him that she saw herself in the jungle the other day, which made her afraid. Given that today is their son's death anniversary, Alex advises her to take some medication because he knows it will be difficult for her. But after Vanessa smacks him for calling their son's name so much, Alex begins to speak abruptly, stating that he has apologized a million times and that he is aware that Vanessa wishes he had passed away that day rather than their son. Vanessa is confused because she was driving that day and tells him that. But he, in return, informs her that he isn't at fault for the accident because he was stopped at the traffic light when all of a sudden a truck came and took them by surprise. When she tells Alex that she was the one driving again, he responds that he loves her, but that she requires immediate medical attention. 
When Vanessa notices the attitude, she knows that this is not her Alex. Martel then enters the room while wearing a bandage on his left hand, but Vanessa also recalls that he had injured his right hand. She heads back to the woods immediately after this and discovers the tree stem again. When she sees someone lurking around, she pulls out her gun and demands to see the imposter. Alex emerges, raising his hands in the air to indicate his submission, and tells her that he is an Alex from another universe and not her spouse. When Vanessa realizes he's not wearing the ring, she knows it's not her husband. He invites her to follow, and she reluctantly follows him to his small camp where he takes out his cigarettes. Vanessa is further shocked as her husband doesn't smoke. Alex argues that they are trapped in a multiverse where two versions cannot coexist, shocking Vanessa. Pulling out a notebook, he tells her he's a physicist and goes over the links of the forest to an interdimensional portal. When he finally asks her to describe Alex in her world, she responds that he is a kind math teacher who is a wonderful father. When she inquires about Vanessa in his world, he responds that Vanessa left him because she was never able to move on after the death of their son. He informs her that although he didn't believe her when she told him she was seeing strange things in the forest, he is now caught in the loop and has seen other Vanessas that he knows aren't his wife. When she asks him whether her kid might be alive in any reality, he responds that in every universe he has ever been, the son has either died or never existed. He advises attaching a fishing wire to a tree, tied between Alex and the other end to the tree arch, and then maybe trailing the wire will always bring them together, which can help progress their search for their original reality. When they enter the house in the first universe they visit, they start looking for a fishing wire in their garage. Martel sees them and starts crying and says, you said you will leave me alone. Alex and Vanessa are surprised by this answer, and after a moment they realize they are dead in this reality. Martel explains that he was the driver of the vehicle that killed Vanessa and Alex. He is traumatized by seeing them because he thinks they are ghosts, and they are haunting him for what he did. But knowing what actually happens, he probably sees other versions of Vanessa and Alex from time to time running into a similar situation, explaining why he said, you said you will leave me alone, as that hints that other version of Vanessa and Alex have promised him that. Before heading into the wilderness, they assure him not to put the guilt on himself and that his life should move forward. The fishing wire is fastened to the tree, and the code words are set to room 1111, bed 8, where their son was hospitalized for three months prior to his death. Alex tells her how he became entangled in the loop before departing. He describes how one evening as he was entering the house, he saw two Martells fighting inside. Suddenly, they started to flee into the woods, and he was pursuing them without realizing he had crossed the interdimensional gate and thus bringing him to the situation he is in now. Vanessa tells the tale of how she encountered herself in the woods and how her doppelganger shot at her. Vanessa gives him her gun, kisses him, and he instructs her to go if he doesn't come back in an hour. When the fishing wire shifts the following morning, Alex appears and verifies that he is the one by using the code words. He informs her that he discovered a universe in which Vanessa and Martel were happy, but he had to return early since Vanessa saw him and passed out. He informs her that he has been collecting explosives and that they intend to destroy the tree stem to prevent anyone from passing through it in the future. After Alex departs once more, the fishing wire again moves later that night. Vanessa yells the code, but when she doesn't hear back, she decides to follow the fishing wire to find Alex. When she gets to this universe's house, she sees the fishing wire tied to a tree. She then walks in the house and discovers a drunk Alex. Vanessa speaks the code words, Room 1111 which he doesn't understand, and begins to talk about how she vanished into the woods. When Alex answers her question about which hand Martel was burned with the right hand, she offers him a strong hug, understanding that she has returned to her reality. She realizes that the Alex she met in the woods has helped her find her reality by bringing her here. When she tells him she can find their son in the forest, Alex suddenly uses the alcohol bottle to knock her out. When Martel interrupts Alex, he is holding a gun at her and about to shoot her when she wakes up tied up in the garage. When Vanessa awakens and claims to be his wife, he informs her that is not possible because he killed her when she emerged from the woods with a rifle trying to kill Alex and Martel. Alex killed her in self-defense, realizing that it is the first version of Vanessa she saw in the woods trying to shoot at her who took over this reality. Alex cannot get a hold of himself by seeing two Vanessas, and while Martel trying to stop him from shooting her, he accidentally shoots himself in the struggle. Martel tells Vanessa to depart because she is no longer a part of this universe, 
He unties her, and on her way out, Martel shoots himself, leaving her original reality without Alex and Martel. When Vanessa gets back to the tree stem, she finds a dead Alex lying there. He doesn't have a wedding ring, so she initially assumes it's the first Alex that helped her. But there is a bright spot on his left ring finger indicating that someone killed him and took it. Unable to take any action at this point, she takes a nap under the tree stem. Alex appears, says the code word correctly, and wakes her up. She quickly starts yelling at him for killing another world's Alex and taking his place, but he argues that he's not taking away anybody else's life but his own and taking his rightful place, revealing the grim nature of his personality and willing to do anything to survive. He assures her that she will find a place she won't want to leave, that her other self will rebel, and that she will have to resort to such drastic means as well. They both retreat as far as they can when Alex puts the explosive at the stem to assure nobody follows him back to his reality. After a while, she takes a rest and Vanessa is finally discovered by another Vanessa, who believes her life has already ended and is well aware of the multiverse idea. The original Vanessa murders the other Vanessa in self-defense. Vanessa realizes what she did and hurries in the direction of the portal. She then enters a different dimension and heads straight for the house. She walks inside and has a shower. After a much needed breakdown and a long sleep of 13 hours, she wakes up the following morning to the sound of a bird striking the window. Vanessa walks outside to observe the dead bird, and Alex follows her, telling her that a dead bird represents a fresh start. Alex then takes Vanessa's hand, and instead of pulling it away, she interlaces the fingers. She follows him inside after he kisses her. After a very cozy breakfast with Alex and Marcel, Vanessa takes the box of her son's favorite things and proceeds upstairs to her son's empty room, where she sees baby shoes and a small kid calling her mommy. But does this mean that she is now in a time loop, and will she be bound to do this forever? I want to hear your theories on this one as the ending can go in so many directions. Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Check these two other videos with some bendy and twisty storylines. See you next time.